Welcome to Toy Poloi. Parental guidance. This video contains scenes of Lego destruction. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Bloy. Now today we're going to be looking at Zelda from the Jerry Anderson TV show Terrorhawks. Back in 1983 Bandai produced a whole range of figures for this line as you can see them here but they only produced one evil figure and that was Zelda and when you find her loose you generally find that she is missing her cape and also missing her cane that she's supposed to hold in her hand. Now I have one here that I picked up fairly recently at a flea market. I think I paid 50p for this. As you can see this one is missing the cape. I'll bring in one that does have the cape. It's fairly similar to the way Star Wars uh, made their capes back in the uh, 70s so we should be easy enough to produce one of those but she's also supposed to be holding a cane in her hand. Now I've never actually found a cane loose. I found a couple of the weapons for the other figures but the cane is particularly hard to find because essentially it's a piece of long sort of black plastic with a silver ball at one end and a silver bit at the other end. The only way I've actually seen one is on the card. So here is my carded version of Zelda and if we look at the side of this you can see that is the cane that she is supposed to hold. So today we're going to sort out making a replacement cape for this Zelda and we're also going to make a cane that both of these figures can hold so she can go back on display as she should have looked back in 1983. We'll start with making the cape because that's actually probably the easiest and quickest thing to make. You can see here this is the cape. It's made of a very thin material. I would say even thinner than the capes that the Star Wars uh, figures have. It's got a rough surface on both sides. Now uh, I've tried to take the cape off this one. This is the figure that I have on display but it's so embedded in the arms I've actually not been able to uh, take it off without sort of fearing of damaging the cape because the material is so thin. But luckily I do have another figure and off that I've managed to get the cape. So this is the cape. You can see the armholes are particularly easily damaged because there's only a very thin piece of uh, the uh, sort of material between the hull and the edge and I think that's what's going to cause all the issues and that's why a lot of these are missing because it'd be very easy to rip this cape off and once it's gone it's gone. You can see how thin the material is. So the first thing we're going to do really is make a pattern. I've taken a scan of this cape into Photoshop and then made a new pattern that we can use to create a replacement cape. Uh, this is what I've done for many other capes and it's the same process that I use always just a, a scan is always the easiest way of uh, getting an exact match on these capes and it only takes a few minutes to make a decent pattern. have the pattern we can get on with actually sort of making the cape. So this is the file that I've made. I've printed this out on just in some normal paper and I've also stuck a little bit of double sided tape around the edge because I find that a much easier way of sticking it to whatever fabric we choose and then sort of cutting it out. But the fabric is actually quite hard to sort of find for this so I've got a few alternatives and I'm going to make sort of the one that I think is best. This is the original cape and you can see it's a sort of uh, cream coloured uh, fabric which actually I think it is vinyl but it's got a sort of fabric feel to it. So I've done a bit of searching on eBay and I found this material which has got a very nice feel to it. Now this is a waterproof nylon fabric. This is a five ounce a sort of uh, it's the sort of thing you'd make waterproof jackets out of. It's called a five ounce waterproof nylon fabric. Uh, and I picked up this sample off eBay. This cost 99p. And the finish on it is lovely. It really sort of does match the finish on this. But as you can see, that is a bit dark. Now this was uh, called beige, this colour. So it's almost there. Because that wasn't quite a good enough match, I also bought another sample from them. And this is called ivory. But as you can see, that's a little bit too white. So it, it almost does the job. But again, the right texture, but just not the right colour. Then I've got this, which is something I've used before for making capes for uh, Star Wars Tusken Raiders or Sand People. Now this is a giant blow up donut. And you can see here that the bottom of the donut is this sort of creamy yellow colour. Now that is a very good match for the colour, but the texture isn't quite right. So as you can see, I've got nothing that is the perfect sort of finish. I've got things that are almost there, but not quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make it out of this beige material, because I think that actually goes nicest with Zelda. Uh, and it's the right sort of texture, not the right colour. And then we'll just make it with that. At some point in the future, maybe I'll find the same sort of vinyl that they've used for making Zelda's cape, but I very much doubt it. This is really thin and really 
you know, it's not quite sure what else you would use it for. So uh, you just have to sort of make do. And I think this uh, nylon sort of waterproof material will do the job quite nicely. What we need to do is actually sort of prep this uh, pattern. So if you can see, I have put double sided tape on the back of it. We need to remove the other side of the double sided tape. And you don't want this to be as sticky as the tape is when it sort of comes off the reel. So I'm going to just sort of stick this onto my trousers for a few times just to, to sort of take the stick off this sticky tape. You'll have seen me do this before on lots of my cape videos. Basically you get a bit of fabric and a bit of sort of fluff off your trousers onto the sticky tape and it takes the stickiness away. So we end up with something like that. You can see it's got a little bit of the sort of the, the uh, material off of my uh, jeans on there. That makes it slightly less sticky. So this uh, swatch of fabric cost me 99p. I can make two or three capes out of this I reckon. I'm just going to do one today. So I'll stick that on. And we'll get a pair of scissors and we'll cut that out. And for the holes for the arms, I normally would use a hole punch, but you can see the holes for the arms are actually quite large. So I'll maybe do a hole punch to start and then we'll sort of enlarge that with a pair of scissors. But for now, I've just got to cut around this and get the basic cape shape. So this is my normal trick for the arm holes. It's just a hole punch, but this is the largest hole punch I have, which is about seven millimeters. And these holes are almost sort of 10 to 11 millimeters. So for the start, I'm just gonna cut a hole in the middle, or stamp a hole in the middle. We'll see how well that works. Now, not particularly well, you can see it sort of messed up the fabric. So I think I'm gonna get a mini pair of scissors and I'll just cut these out by hand. So here's the cape with the pattern removed. We can now put this onto the figure. These are quite awkward to get on. You have to rotate the arms all the way around to the back. And we can squeeze that through like that. I think again, this is why they are ripped so readily. They are just a very awkward cape to put on because the arms of Zelda are sort of pointing outwards. And it just means that everything is stretched slightly. It just makes it awkward to get this cape on and you can see why they rip so easily and why if a child takes this cape off, getting it back on is just going to cause even more damage to this figure. We might take those arms around and then try and hook it over. It's quite a poor design really. I'll fold that down. But after all of that, that's actually not a bad cape. I quite like that colour. It's sort of, uh, yeah, a little bit darker, but certainly suits the figure quite nicely. I've also just made this one out of the vinyl blow up donut. And you can see that is a, certainly a much better colour match. It's a little bit more creamy than the original one, but it works quite nicely. It's actually quite hard to get this one on because the vinyl doesn't seem to have quite as much give as the uh, nylon waterproof fabric. But you can see it does work. And again, that's a perfectly acceptable replacement cape there for Zelda. I think I'm actually going to leave that one on just because the colour matches sort of nicer and the texture although it's not quite right I think the colour match is more important so for now she's going to have a vinyl cape that is made out of the vinyl that I use for uh, Tuscan Raiders in Star Wars uh, certainly looks the part if you like Terror Hawks and would like to know more then why not check out Fusion Magazine issue 8 because I've written a special article for them all about the Terror Hawks toy line the magazine is jam-packed full of uh, articles all about retro gaming modern gaming tabletop gaming and all sorts of toy related stuff so it's well worth checking out I've been writing for them for a few months so if you check out the last few issues you'll see other toy articles that I have written. It's available as a physical magazine as you can see here in front of me but also as a digital download. You can find out all the details at fusiongamemag.com. I will put a link in the description so you can go and grab yourself a copy and also grab some of the back issues. P -O -Y -P -O -L -L -O -I. To make the cane, I have a couple of ideas. Uh, and as I say, I don't actually have an original one to copy. So we're gonna be copying this one that's inside the package here. You can see that it is a fairly simple uh, construction. It's a, a long, thin piece of plastic. It's got a slight taper to it. One end has got a little silver spike that just looks like a bit of silver paint on it. And the top has a little sort of uh, bobble on it. Again, that's been painted silver. So the first thing we need to do is actually work out how long this is. 
This should be relatively easy to do. I have a ruler here. I'm just going to measure the length of this and we can use that as our sort of basis for making a new cane. So that to me looks like five and a half centimetres. So I'm going to show you a couple of ways I would go about making this. Uh, the first one is going to be to use some styrene rod. Now I've used this before on other projects. You can pick this up from most model shops. Uh, let's see, polystyrene rod. This is a two millimetre diameter rod and this is made by a company called Evergreen. It's for sort of scale modelling. So what we're going to do is take a piece of that and we will cut off a uh, five and a half centimetres as that is what we measured. So I'm just going to quickly measure that and we'll cut the end off. Now the original uh, cane, as you can see here, has a slight taper to it and then the end is almost tapered to a point. So I think it'd be quite nice to sort of file uh, the end of this down just to so it had a little bit of a point on it. I'm just going to get a file here. These are emery balls that I'm using at the moment. These are ones that you would use to file your nails. They're particularly easy to use for uh, to bits of modelling like this and very cheap. This is a pack of 10 emery balls. It's got two sides, a soft side and a sort of rougher side. And we can just use that to shape the end of this uh, piece of plastic. So I'm just going to file the end a bit flatter and a bit rounder first. And then we can slowly sort of create a taper on the end just by rolling the piece of styrene between your fingers while rubbing it on the emery board and we will end up with a bit of a taper at the end. So there you can see we're starting to get a bit of a taper onto the end of that just to make it not look like a sort of a straight piece of uh, the plastic styrene just something with a bit of a taper just to help the end there. So I think that's that's good enough. That's the start of the cane. Now for the top section, uh, there are a couple of ways we could do this. We could actually mix up a little bit of uh, milliput and sculpt something. Or well, the even easier way is actually just to use some super glue. And what we're going to do with the super glue, you have to be a little bit patient with this, but to make the bobble it would work really nicely. I'm going to drop a tiny amount of super glue onto the end of this stick. Like so. And you can see if I hold this upside down, it forms a little ball. So what we're going to do is we're going to leave this to set. If you don't uh, push super glue together between two, two surfaces, it takes a couple of hours for it to set. And then we can add another bit of uh, super glue on top of that. And if we do that a couple of times, we'll end up with a little ball on the end of this stick. And it should start to look like Zelda's cane. And here is one I made earlier. So you can see here that I've uh, done a couple of drops of super glue on that and let that sort of go off. And then a little bit of sanding. We've ended up with a pretty reasonable looking cane. As I mentioned, you could use milliput. So here is one as well that I've made using milliput. I'm not so uh, pleased with the end result of this one just because it's quite hard to make a small amount of milliput sort of stick to something like this. So it's a little bit on the large side, but it would do nonetheless. Now there is one other way I thought of that we could make a cane and that's going to be using a piece of Lego because as I often say there's always a piece of Lego that will fit most fixes that we need and again with this one it's the Lego antenna. This is a sort of long flexible piece of plastic. It has a ball at one end and then a Lego connecting piece at the other end. You can easily get these off eBay. I buy them all the time for fixing other toys and you can see here that it is actually quite a good looking cane already. All we've got to do is what we've done with this one in the middle is cut it off at five and a half centimetres and taper the end. And I think that again is quite a good starting point for a cane. So I'm going to also cut and prepare this one and then we can go ahead and paint these other two, add a bit of silver to it. And I think we'll have three quite nice looking canes. So a Lego aerial is probably the easiest option, but uh, this is possibly slightly more accurate just because you can shape the end of it a bit better but I think that Lego antenna is going to work a treat. Now just quickly given the uh, two that we've made out of the styrene rod spray with some black modelling uh, spray paint. You could use any paint really for this. I could have used some humble acrylics but I happen to be uh, already using some black spray paint for another project so I just quickly uh, given those a quick coat. You can see here I've not painted the bottoms as well and that's just simply because I taped it to a bit of card to save getting uh, paint on my hand so those areas didn't get uh, covered in spray paint but that doesn't matter because what we're going to do is paint it exactly like this uh, original cane that uh, Zelda has. So we've got to do a little bit of silver at the top and about sort of, um, I would say that's about seven or eight millimetres of silver at the bottom. And for that, I'm going to be using uh, some paint pens. I have a couple here. I've got an Edding 780 and also some Uni Paint uh, silver markers. Uh, you can use any of these. Uh, it doesn't really make much difference. Make sure to give them a good shake before you apply the paint. So I have this here. This, I've already given this a good shake off camera. Just make sure the paint is actually sort of coming out of the nib. And we can then just go ahead and uh, paint these canes make them look like they should do. 
this first one I'm doing is the Lego antenna. So this is only a bit of paint on the top and the bottom. The main part of it hasn't been painted. And we'll move on to the other two once I've got this one done. But it's a very quick job. Don't really have to be even particularly neat. It doesn't look like the original was painted particularly neatly. There you go, you can see that already starts to look like uh, Zelda's cane. So I'll just get these all painted up and we can test them on the figure. We can now test the canes in the Zeldas. So this is the one that I've made the replacement cape for. I'm going to use the Lego cane there, which can just slot that into ha hand. Yeah, that looks really nice. That does the job. And I'm going to use the other one, which is the one we made with a bit of a styrene rod and some super glue on the end. I think the one with the uh, bit of milliput, that's just too large. So I'm going to put that to the side. So let's put that one in that Zelda's hand. And again, that looks the part. I think that is that Zelda is now all finished and she's ready to go back on display here at Toy Polloi. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you want to know how to make your own Zelda cubes, which you can see in the background here, then check out the links in the description. I'll also put a link at the end of this video and you can see how I went about making these Zelda cubes and these magnetic cubes. Hope this video has been of interest to you and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos. You can also follow Toy Ploy on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram.